The social web is the world's largest user-generated forum where new content is constantly created and shared. Let's use the world's largest social network as an example. In one day alone, Facebook users upload 350 million photos, post 734 million comments, and click the like button an astounding 4.5 billion times. In such a social media-driven environment where everyone is a content creator, how do users feel about content ownership? And what does this reveal about commonly accepted social norms when it comes to user-contributed content? Join us as we take a visit to San Francisco to talk with Kathy Marshall in her research on the social web. Kathy Marshall and her research partner Frank Shipman a professor from Texas A&M's Department of Computer Science and Engineering first became interested in researching social web ownership as they were exploring the idea of personal archiving. About a decade ago, people started moving their stuff more and more online and ownership started becoming more complicated. It wasn't just what you had on your laptop and on your local server in your name and on removable media, it started to be stuff you were storing in social media services, and other people were participating in the creation of this stuff. And therefore, stuff just got a lot more complicated. Who owns this stuff? What can they do with it? Marshall and Shipman conducted surveys over the course of four years to identify social norms when it comes to content ownership and control. With millions of people using social media these days, their first challenge was to decide on who the participants would be. Well, we wanted to look at the kind of people who were social media savvy, but not necessarily um, computer savvy. In other words, we didn't want to look at other computer scientists. We wanted to look at all of the people out there who are creating and using online stuff. Eight sets of studies focusing on a different media type and service were conducted. Participants were presented with 16 to 28 hypotheticals associated with two to four actual scenarios that could happen in the real world. The reactions were then recorded based on a seven-point Likert scale. And then we also wanted to find out what people did themselves when they were really faced with these decisions about what they could save and what they could reuse and what they wanted to remove from the network. When it came to saving social media content, Marshall and Shipman discovered something unexpected. Well, in the first seven studies, we were pretty comfortable with what we saw. We thought, oh, people could feel they can save just about anything that they encounter on the open web. They can just download it and put, save it to their local disk and all is well. But then we discovered one exception. The one exception is social media like Facebook, where there's a social network and there are their own connections set some boundaries and they respect those boundaries. That turns out to change what people do. They no longer feel they can freely save things when they know who's involved. When it came to reusing social media, Marshall and Shipman discovered that commercial use by a third party other than the original content creator was viewed negatively. I think my favorite example comes from the questions we asked about, about uh, commercial players like Amazon and Facebook selling people's data. People were really seemed to be very upset about that, even though I think they must know that this happens. Instead, they wanted to be able to monetize the, the data themselves, which kind of surprised me. Copyright law can be quite confusing in the context of the social web, but can social norms in and of itself do enough to create a firm foundation of unspoken rules which users respect and adhere to? Well, one thing that, um, that becomes very clear from doing studies like this is that social norms, people converge on them and they can be far more intuitive than, than things like copyright law. Robert Ellickson pointed this out in his book, and the thing that seems to be very important is that people can arrive at social norms that really guide behavior in a way that is as good or sometimes better than law 
which is complicated and sometimes people don't understand it that well. Find out more in Who Owns the Social Web, a contributed article in the May 2017 Communications of the ACM.